Aesop's Fables The Sun and the Wind Narrated by Lynette Quarrels The north wind was showing off. He blew over the sea, whipping it up into a frenzy of spitting spray and rolling, rollicking waves. He tossed ships in the air as if it were child's play. Look at me, he cried, so wild and free. I am the strongest of them all. From high in the sky, the sun watched him and laughed to herself. That wind, she thought, that bragging, big-headed, arrogant wind. Does he really think he's stronger than me? He doesn't know the meaning of strength. You're nothing but a tiresome boy, she called out. I am the sun, and I am stronger by far. Oh, really? taunted the wind. Watch this. And he tore over the land, snapping off branches and pinging back trees like elastic bands. He plucked roofs from houses, blasted down walls, then, just for fun, flattened an entire town hall. The sun sneered. Is that the best you could do? she asked. Ha! said the wind. I haven't even started. In fact, I think we should have a contest. You'll soon see how much stronger I am. After all, you do nothing but sit in the sky all day. A contest, said the sun. What a good idea. Let me see. And she gazed down on the world below until her eye was caught by a man walking along with a bag on his back on a path near the sea. The first to strip that man of his clothes is a winner, declared the sun. Do you think you can do it? Easily, retorted the wind. Watch and learn, lazy sun. I'll show you just how it's done. The wind wafted down to the man and pulled at his scarf. At first he tugged it, a gentle tease. Then, with a whoosh, he sent it sailing away in the breeze. Come back, shouted the man. He leaped, but too late, as the wind entangled the scarf in a tree. The wind chuckled, and for my next trick, he whisked the hat from the man's head and blew it effortlessly out to sea. I told you it would be easy, jeered the wind. The sun looked unconcerned. You're not done yet, she said. Next, the wind bore down on the man with a blast of his freezing breath. The man was buffeted this way and that, his coat flapping wildly, as if it had grown great blue wings. It was nearly ripped right from him, but with flailing hands the man grappled with it and hung on tight. The wind puffed out his cheeks and blew harder still, but the harder he blew, the more the man clung on. The wind paused, forced to catch his breath. The man seized his chance and opened his bag, pulling on yet more clothes, a pair of gloves and another coat, which he buttoned up to his neck. The sun smiled. You've had your chance, she said. My turn now. Humph, <laughs> said the wind, reluctantly drawing back. The sun shone down, radiating gentle warmth. The man quickly took off his gloves and extra coat. The sun smirked. Then she darted burning rays down to the ground until the air sizzled with heat. The man grew red. Beads of sweat appeared on his brow, and he gazed longingly at the sparkling sea. In a moment, he threw off his clothes and ran naked into the welcoming waves. You see, said the sun, gloatingly, I won easily. For all your huffing and puffing, you were powerless. All he needed was some gentle persuasion. The wind snorted with rage. You may have won, but I still can have fun. And while the man swam in the sea, the wind flew off with his clothes. The moral of the story is, persuasion is better than force.